All right. Well, welcome, Fixers friends. Happy Resurrection Weekend. Happy Good Friday. Well, this is Patrice Saige. I'm here on the Nehemiah Entrepreneurship Community Podcast, and I'm here with uh, our good friend, uh, Pastor Anthony Moore, the good reverend, Pastor Moore. How are you, sir? How you doing, sir? I Thank am honored to, honored to be here with you on Good Friday. Yes, it is Good Friday. Thank you so much for being here. You know, Pastor, um, we've been doing a series of podcasts to encourage our friends and our members around the world as they're grappling with this COVID-19. Sure. And, and I thought this being the week of Good Friday, the week of Resurrection Weekend, that it'd be good for us to have somebody on Good Friday, who can speak uh, prophetically, can speak from the Word of God in terms of, um, on the subject, um, Good Friday in the midst of crisis, because uh, this year's Good Friday happens to fall actually on the week that in the United States, at least, they're saying will be the worst week of COVID-19. And uh, so I thought, you know, who better than the man who wrote the the one minute, one more minute devotional, one more minute devotional, yeah. the pastor Carolina Church, ex chair of Nehemiah Projects board, and and just um, a good friend of the ministry, Pastor. If you don't show up in Nehemiah week, nobody shows up. That's how important you are to us because wow. of, wow, of the kind word that you bring forth each time. So welcome to the podcast. I'm honored to be a part of the podcast with you, Patrice. I think that what Nehemiah is doing and has done um, speaks volumes about the kingdom, but also it speaks volumes about the heart of the visionaries to literally let the Lord use them to make a giant leap in the hearts and in the world that others would usually walk away from. So I just think that Nehemiah has um, a great place in the heart of God. And I'm honored to be a part of the podcast. Well, thank you so much, Pastor. <clears throat> uh, Pastor, I'm not sure about you, but um, to my memory, at least uh, in my lifetime, this is the first crisis that is um, global. Yeah. So we had a meeting this week with our regional leaders. And whether it was Latin America, Asia, Africa, Europe, we all share the same sentiment, lockdown, uh, social distancing, uh, you know, shut in, no church, church on the internet. Everybody had the same, the same story to share. Uh, and, and so in a unique way, it brings us together as a community in the union where we have shared experiences so that's the good thing about it. In a unique way, it's an opportunity for families to get closer. But in a challenging way, there's economic uh, challenges that came with it. There's fears. Uh, one of our board members' wives, I mean, husbands, uh, caught the coronavirus. I don't know anybody personally that have died, but I know friends who know people that have died. So. There's a question about his mind is where is God? You know, as even as we think about this week. So let me ask you, first of all, is this God punishing us faster? Is yeah. I think that um, Patrice, whenever you in fact see something happen, first of all, this, this did not happen to us in this magnitude from a pandemic perspective before 19, the last, well, the last time it happened for us was 1918, mm. 1918. Um, there's always a reason behind everything. <clears throat> um, so when, when you ask, do I think that this, is this God punishing us my response to you is that this is God's way of getting our attention. Mm -hmm. I think that um, 
you would have to be Stevie Wonder or Ray Charles reincarnated not to be able to see that God has literally touched every area that man has made a distraction or an idol and has drawn them away from what God says ought to be primarily number one. Whether it is economics, you know, money drives us, drives our country. Mm. Whether it is sports, you name it, the Lord has shut down an, an invisible virus that we cannot see, nor can we comprehend how to, how to work around. There is no intellect that we could utilize to wrangle this thing in. Um, and God says, I need you to see that I'm still on the throne. Now, I believe that the coronavirus becomes a sign for us of disconnection. Mm. It shows exactly how we have been so disconnected. The virus created disconnection because we were so disconnected in the first place. Um, the virus has really helped us to see how disconnected and isolated we are. Um, um, before this coronavirus, you probably didn't even know who your neighbors were. <laughs> but, well, but, but now you, you, you're getting to know who your neighbors are. Before, before the coronavirus, we were so busy, Patrice, doing the work of the kingdom that we were literally leaving our families disconnected from us. And so now we don't have a choice because you are quarantined or put in a safe place. If you look at this, I mean, God's saying, I'm trying to take you back to what you, in fact, have run away from. And so the disconnection for me is um, critical. You politically, we're trying to connect. Um, um, you're watching people do all kinds of things to help other people out when before they would just walk by them and not even speak. So this coronavirus is literally showing us how disconnected we were in the first place. And I'm prayerfully believing that the coronavirus will be that entity that gets us back to the basics and the foundation of which God's called us to. Wow, wow, good word. So now there is a debate going on around the church not being allowed to gather. And, and, and there are some who feel as though the government has gone too far and, mm -hmm. And so my question to you as a pastor, what is your position on that? I mean, um, how do you feel about the idea that some churches still want to press and gather despite, you know, the sense, the, the risk that the government present has shared with us? So Patrice, I have, I have several thoughts. And as a matter of fact, I have colleagues on both sides of the fence. Um, I want to share with you what my position is and why I take that position. Mm -hmm. I believe that I have two primary responsibilities. One is to feed the sheep. Two, to protect the sheep. I don't know anyone who can argue with that. When God called us to pastor, God called us to minister. He called us to feed the sheep, but he also called us to protect the sheep. I, in fact, know that I am not, um, so I have, I have colleagues, in fact, who say the, 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 the state, the government has no business saying to houses of God, places of worship, when they can and cannot, primarily based on the basis that there is a separation of church and state and that they don't have the authority to do that. I, on the other hand, and I understand their argument. I'm not, I don't dispute that. However, when it becomes a matter of life and death, um, I take 
the position that I would rather for me to be able to, to preach the word, feed the, the flock while keeping them protected bringing them into a gathering of hundreds, if not thousands of people is most unwise and certainly unprudent. Now, the, the Lord tells us that we ought, to, we ought to adhere to the laws of the land and we ought to obey those who have authority and rule over us. And in this instance, I look at the idea that the governor of this state, that the president of these United States have a responsibility to make sure that they are protecting the citizens of this country. And if I am anything that God has called, I ought to want to line up with that and say, this I believe ought to be the plight of our church. And we find another way to do worship. Mm -hmm. Another way to do worship. Now, let me just tell you this, Patrice. This is what's mind blogging to me. What we have been forced to do, what we have been forced to do is to literally go back to what we see in the book of Acts as houses that literally house the church. God, I just said something that blew me up the wall. So, 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 so in the book of Acts, they didn't have these massive buildings. Wow. They didn't have storefronts. They didn't have mega churches. Y'all, there was thousands of believers who, who gave their lives to Christ. And what they did was went back to their homes. Y'all not talking to me. Went back to their homes and they literally had church in the house. Wow. Now, let me tell you what I believe the coronavirus has made us do. Have church in the house. And that we cannot argue with. This is God's taking us back to our roots. He's helping us to see. I'll do something else for you. Now, in addition to that, he's taking us back to having church in the house. How about we have gotten so lost and believe and belief that the building was literally the church. Mm. <laughs> and God says, oh, no. No, I'm going to help y'all to see something. This building ain't the church. You are the church. Wow. So, therefore, wherever you go, whether you're in your house, whether you're in your neighborhood, whether you're walking up and down the street, the church just came to the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I believe, Patrice, is literally a part of what God's trying to reconnect us back to. We've got to look at this, the church. So then I'll do something else for you. If, if God says we ought not have any other God before him. Mm. Now, I, I think, I think this is just me, that we have made some stuff idols. Now, now we can we can we can we can talk about sports team, we can talk about Wall Street, and we can talk about a whole other things that we've made idols. But let's not leave out the fact that we've made the church an idol. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew I knew y'all weren't gonna say much about that. We <laughs> we've literally made the church an idol. Wow. The building, the mega, the building. We've made it an idol. Listen, let me tell y'all something. Um, um, generally my colleagues always talk about how many people they see on a Sunday. They're like, Hey man, I saw thousands this week. I had hundreds to come in this week. There were 100 folk that walked down the aisle and surrendered their lives to Christ. And I'd be saying, that's wonderful. But you don't hear anybody saying, I saw thousands this week or hundreds. No, no, no. You didn't see anybody because you're the only one up in that facility. And God says, this is not about a show. Mm. This is about worship. Mm. This is not a production. It's about worship. Mm. And until we can get back to those things that are basic, we're going to forever be disconnected. And that's my thought on this, um, Patrice. I'm sorry. Oh, my Lord. So first... You helped us to understand that God is trying to get our attention. Yeah. Then second, you help us to understand what the real church is all about. 
Yes, sir. <laughs> now let's talk about Good Friday, and then and then I'm going to wrap it up with your devotional because I want to I want to Pastor Moore has written a, a devotional book that I, I encourage all of you guys to grab a copy. Go to our website nameoutprice.org or go to onemoreminute.com. Right, Pastor? Yes. And you can grab a copy, the ebook or physical books. Um, and actually, Pastor Moore, our, our women in business are using your devotional right now. Uh, and let me just go make a plea for them. They want to invite your wife uh, to come in as a guest speaker. I said, oh. but didn't Pastor write the devotional? <laughs> they said, no, we want to hear from the first lady. <laughs> So they be honored. She'd be honored. I, I, so they I, want I these are women from all over the world. Wow. They get together online once a week, led by Deborah and and, and Wendy, and um, and so these are women business, and they're and they're walking through your forty day devotional on a week to week basis as a devotional study. But before we get to the devotional, I want to talk about Good Friday because I I embody here because I want you to speak to us Good Friday in the midst of a crisis. So it sounds almost um, contradictory to call this the Good Friday for some, because for many around the world, they're saying, what's so good about today? Mm -hmm. Pastor, talk to us, help us fix our minds to know why should we celebrate this weekend despite our reality wherever we're around the world? Why should this day still be good? Yeah, so Patrice, we can never erase the basis for what took place um, as it relates to Jesus going to the cross. Um, whether it's a coronavirus or whether it is 9-11, um, the truth of the matter is what Christ did for us is still paramount and is worthy of being celebrated. Mm. We, in fact, attempt to celebrate Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday with Easter bunny, chocolate eggs, Easter egg hunts, getting our best clothes, being dressed up, going to church, showing off, it is one of the days that church is most packed mm. because for us, that's what resurrection represents. Unfortunately, it is not. When Christ died, when he went to Calvary, we were in a crisis. Mm. You're not listening to me. When we went, when Christ went to the cross, mm. He went there because we were in a crisis. Mm. Now, I don't want you to miss the fact that um, there were three crosses on Calvary. Mm. One on the right, one on the left, one in the middle. The man on the right um, died, but got a chance to make heaven his home. Man on the left decided to, to um, rail against Jesus. Jesus said, hey, never said a word to him, just simply talked to the guy on the right and said, um, um, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Mm. Now, Here's what I believe, uh, Patrice, as it relates to that. I believe that the whole idea of, of crisis is what Jesus came to deal with and settle. The fact, if we in fact go back and allow the coronavirus to be bigger than Christ, then we are still as much in a crisis as we were before Christ died for us. My Lord. What Christ is seeking to do is take us back to the foundation. So what we don't get to go to church and dress up? So what we don't get to fill these buildings? What difference does it make to fill the buildings up with people mm -hmm. and we walk out 
worse than we were before we went in. Jesus says, what I want to do is I literally want to get you. It's, it's, listen, it's only when God sends a crisis to us wow. that he gets our attention. My Lord. When everything is calm and going well, it's hard for us to connect with God. But I tell you, the moment he sends a crisis and death starts riding, you start hearing people saying, Lord, I surrender. And that is what God's after more than anything else. So we don't get a chance to, to run around and do Easter egg hunts and give out chocolates and all that. Man, so, so what? But what we do get to do is share that he died. Mm. He was buried and was resurrected. How about this? T to live is Christ and to die is gain. Oh, you didn't like that one. How about this one, y'all? I have now taken the sting out of death and robbed grave of his victory. I have gone down into hell so that you don't have to, and all you got to do is receive me. See, that to me means more for us in our celebration than me going to church on Sunday. Man, I'm having a grand time preaching to an empty building. I tell, I tell people this often, um, Patrice, um, I normally, my congregation size is only 536 persons. That's all that members that I have that are active. Now, um, on a regular good Sunday, I'm probably preaching to 300 persons. How about I am now able um, in our last, in our last, um, our last um, 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 stream service, whether it was on Facebook or whether it's on streaming, um, um, do church stream or whatever. How about I'm preaching to thousands now? Wow. So, so what the Lord has done is he's literally magnified, multiplied the church. I was happy. I was, I was in the church preaching to 300. I may have 400 signed on. That's 700 persons. We're now at 2,500, 2,600 people who are literally getting the gospel all because we were forced to take it beyond the walls. And that's what I'm saying. So when I look at this crisis, when I look at Corona, the virus, y'all, yes, there's some, some, some bad that comes out of it and people die as a result of it. But I also want you to see what God's doing. He's birthing some stuff. And I gotta tell you this, man, there, there is no way you can have new birth without pain. Um, nobody can, can tell you that they that um, I had a child, but there was no pain involved. Whenever something new comes, there's going to be some pain involved. All I know is God's doing something. God's doing something. God's doing something. Now, I've heard some other people say, Patrice, that this is, um, this is the apocalypse. This is the end times. Now, um, now, what I say to them is this real candidly, you got to be careful about that because the word apocalypse from the biblical times, it means revealing. Mm. It means unveiling. And, and what I see is not the end times, but I see the end of their time where people are literally trying to hold on to what ain't yours. The power and the glory belongs to God. Ooh, God. It belongs to God. And if it belongs to God, you can't hold on to what's yours. It belongs to him. Therefore, we ought to give him honor and praise. And so what I see God doing is revealing the disconnect and then challenging us to become reconnected to him. That's my thought, Patrice. Wow. Pastor, before we go to the devotional and, and, and wrap up here, you've been so good we got friends on Facebook that are not only watching us, but they're commenting. You know, um, <laughs> I love this. I got to share this one with you. Um, one of your colleagues, um, Pastor Gray out of Maryland, he yeah. said, you are messing up somebody's theology. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, and, I don't mean to. <laughs> But I do want to challenge our theology. Yeah, I want to yeah. challenge. Yes, yes. So, friends, I'm going to open it up as I go to my last segment with Pastor Moore. If you have questions for Pastor Moore today, 
I'm, I'm seeing your comments. Uh, Wendy, good to see you. Nancy Barnes, good to see you. Uh, Anita Harewood, my good friend from long ago, good to see you. Uh, Pastor Gray, good to see you. Um, all of you guys who are with us, uh, good to see you. And um, and so now I'm gonna kind of open it up as as you guys kind of comment, ask your questions because I you I will ask Pastor Mo some questions there if there are any. But um, uh, and, and, and Anita, it has been a long time, so we got to connect soon. And and I also saw my good friend. Um, uh, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Anyway, I forgot his name, but uh, a young man that I knew from way back. But Pastor, so you wrote a book called um, One More Minute. Yeah. It's available on Amazon. It's available at womanmoment.com or at Nima Project, wherever you like to go. One More Minute. And the the subtitle of this book, I want to read it. Um, it it's it's um, so th th it's a devotional series. And, and this particular devotional series is designed, it's a 40 devotional designed to encourage people by ruling them in the word of God. There's also an audio version of this. By the way, guys, if, um, if you like, if you don't like to read, <laughs> you may want to get the audio. It is Pastor Moore himself reading uh, the audio. And I, once in a while throughout the year, I would just listen to your 40 day devotional guide in the audio form it's it's musical your your you got the voice of god coming out of you and it just keeps me kiss me straight um uh, our women in business are using this for their devotional study and so if you want to know more about if you're a woman entrepreneur you want to be a part of devotional study just reach out to us go to our website or our facebook page and just email us we'll make sure we connect you to wendy clams and and deborah schlock who are leading this women from all over the world are, are being a part of this but so Pastor Moore, there are, there are a few devotionals that, that you have in here that I want to just uh, share the titles. And I want you to just speak to how these can encourage us. Um, you have the blessing of brokenness. You know, these are things that I think ties to, to this moment, the success, success through God's eyes. Um, you have faith will get you through when fear jeopardizes our future. Uh, simple faith is all it takes. Faith thinks. Um, you have healing your hurting heart. Again, these are the words that can speak to our very moment. Yeah. Having faith for freedom, uh, pr prayer that releases angels, life amongst the weeds. I'm skipping some of them. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have double minded disaster, uh, finishing, uh, fishing for a future, finding God in the ordinary. Where is God when it hurts, my Lord? I mean, somebody around the world needs that particular devotional. <laughs> Where is God when it hurts? Because somebody lost their jobs. Some had their business closed down. Some of their family members are sick. Uh, some are going through whatever they've, they've lost income. Uh, strength for the struggle. Go where Jesus is. Arm for the attack. God always plans for the future. Um, when you find yourself empty, when helping is hurting, and then you have the infirmity of inferiority, and you have one of my favorite miracles happens in miracle territory. And then you have God's word changes everything. And then you have when God says, leave me alone. So you have all these devotional. So pastor, so as, as we're going through right now, trying to handle this crisis, whether it's this weekend or the days ahead, what are, what, which devotional can you point us to within that 40 day guide that can encourage us in these moments? Could you speak to us a bit? If somebody right now goes and buy that devotional book, which one would you say, you know what, you know, how would they use it at this moment uh, to help them through this crisis? Yeah, Patrice, you know, I would, I would say, that um, there are so many of them that literally could speak life into our situation. Um, the blessing of brokenness talks about the, after going through the pain and how the pain produces productivity. Mm. And I think that that's one of, um, one of my favorite ones. I also like 
where, uh, where is God when it hurts? Because many persons are asking the question, where is God? Um, how could he allow this to happen? Or why would God allow this to happen? And so um, there are scores of devotionals within the One More Minute book that I believe, as you named a, a plethora of them, about 10, and there's a total of 40, um, 40 devotionals, but at least 10 of them, you could take and isolate them very much so to, to this situation that we are currently in right now. Um, and so I just think that um, that they could pick any one of them um, uh, of those 10 that we've been outlined here and literally get some biblical truth and principles that will help them while they are safe at home. Um, that keep you sane, keep you keep you in place, and so that that's my thought um, just off the top. Um, but when where 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 is God when it hurts? Um, I think is just you know everybody right now is hurting, whether it's through the job, whether it's through um, family relational, um, whether it's physically in the body. As you know, I just in fact. Um, um, buried my my biological father, and um, one of the things I've had to wrestle with as a pastor is that as my dad was transitioning, I was not able to be there with him. Um, um, I wasn't able to be there as a son. I wasn't able to be there as a pastor, all because of COVID nineteen. Wow. And the one of the things that wrestles through my mind is, um, was my dad afraid because he had none of his children or even his preacher's son to walk him through this next phase. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I know what that's like, man. I, people are hurting. We're not able to, to even have homegoing services or funerals to celebrate the life, believing that the funerals are really a part of what helped us to get the therapy that we need to release. And so um, where is God when it hurts? I, to me, Patrice is the one that I think um, speaks real crystally clear to our situation. Pastor, I hate to put you on the spot, but sure. let's bless the people. Could you, um, Share as we wrap up here, just share that devotional. Yep, I'll be and as you do, yeah. again, we got friends joining us. You have a question, Pastor Moore. This is our last segment. Just go ahead and ask it. Deborah, good to see you. Uh, Nancy and Terry are there. Good to see you guys. Maurice Harley, good to see you. Laurel Jones, good to see you. And, and I know there are many others who I can share, but, but let's have Pastor Moore just bless us today with, with one of these devotionals. Where, where is God when it hurts? This is a good Friday. Be encouraged by this. Where is God when it hurts? Luke 24, verse 13 through 35. I'll zero in at verse 15 of Luke 24. As they talk and discuss these things, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. At some point in our lives, every one of us will go through a season of being shattered with difficulties, hardships, problems, and pain. All of us at some point will experience brokenness. We lose our homes, we lose our jobs, we fall sick and we ask, where was God? Someone may ask, where was God when my child died? May I suggest he was in the same place he was in when his own son died. Hardship makes it hard to look beyond what we can see. But God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The issue is not that he's not there. The issue is we don't recognize his presence in our predicaments. In Luke 24, we see two disciples depressed, dismayed, and downtrodden. They had just left the funeral of Jesus. The body was missing. 
the women were talking strangely. Their preconceived misconceptions were that if Jesus was the Christ, he wouldn't have suffered and he certainly wouldn't have died. In their minds, his life was over. So now they could, how, how could they possibly see who was walking beside them? The Bible says Jesus himself drew near, but they didn't recognize him. In the midst of their depression, in the midst of their difficulty, in the midst of their suffering, Jesus himself showed up. But it was an entirely different way than they expected. Listen. If you have a preconceived misconception about how the Lord is supposed to show up for you, even when he does arrive, you won't know he's there. You may have a plan of what he's going to do when he shows up for you, but when he acts differently, don't conclude he didn't show up at all. Preconceived misconceptions can blind you. Now, we shouldn't judge these disciples too harshly because pain itself can be blinding. Pain can be so unbearable, you can't see life clearly. You don't know who is for you or who is against you. You don't know what to do or what you need. This happened to Mary at the tomb. She thought someone had taken the Lord's body and the Bible says she knelt down and wept uncontrollably. She didn't realize Jesus was standing right beside her. It wasn't until she heard his voice that her eyes were open to see. When you're in the midst of pain and you've been crying all night long, you might wonder, where is God? Remember, if you stop crying long enough to listen to the voice of the Savior, you'll discover he's been there the whole time. Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. He won't prevent you from experiencing pain, but he will walk with you and preserve you in the pain. No matter how hard it gets, regardless of how difficult it is, there is one person you can depend on, and his name is Jesus. Even now, he's right there with you. Now take a minute and acknowledge the presence of Jesus with you. Observe the comfort of his nearness. If you've suffered pain, ask him to show you where he was in the midst of it. Listen for his voice. If you are holding on to misconceptions or misplaced expectations, repent and invite him to show up any way he deems best. Now, in this meditative minute, know that according to Genesis 28, 15, he will remain with us and restore us. Now allow me to pray with you. Jesus, thank you for always drawing near to me. Thank you for never leaving or forsaking me. When I'm in, when I'm in trouble, when I have trials, please protect me from the pain and misconceptions that blind me. I always want to be aware of your presence with me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Wow, what a blessing. Pastor, thank you so much. Again, if you want a copy of that devotional book, just go to onemomenta.com, go to the Neymar Project website, or go to Amazon. You can find the audio, the ebook, or the physical book. Pastor, there are some people listening right now, and, um, and, and they need prayer. You just, you preached, you preached. Um, and, and I want you, sir, to pray for them Sure. as the Lord leads you so that right now, wherever they are, they may be comforted. Could you pray? Yes, sir. Father, in Jesus' name, I knock on the door of heaven because I've heard you say in your word, God, that we could ask and it shall be given. Seek and we shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. I heard you say in your word, God, that we have not because we've asked not. God, in your word, you said that if I call upon you, that you would answer. And you would show me great and mighty things that are to come. 
So now, God, I'm praying. I'm praying for your presence. God, we're praying for your wisdom. I'm praying for your protection. I'm praying, God, for your provisions. I pray for these on the call, God, for your, for your power. I'm praying for your peace. God, give it to us. In the midst of this crisis, God, give us peace. Help us to trust in you and lean not to our own understanding and in all our ways acknowledge you. Help us, God, to hear your voice and the voice of a stranger we will not follow. Now, God, for every need that's on this call, I'm praying that you meet the need. God, you said in your word that you would supply all of our needs. So right now, whatever the needs are, meet that need. God, meet the need, meet the need, meet the need. God, meet the need. Do whatever needs. I know you have the power to do it. Meet the need. I'm praying, God, for those who have anxiety. God, calm us today. I'm praying for those who are depressed. God, speak unto us unspeakable joy. God, I'm asking you to do what only you can do. Cover our families, provide for our families, place a hedge of protection around us. God, I believe that you can. I know that you will. I know you have the power. So now, God, for every person under the sound of my voice, comfort now, strengthen now. And Lord, we're not gonna wait until you deliver us. We're gonna praise you. We're gonna honor you. We're gonna shout for you while in the midst of it because Lord, we know it's Friday, but Sunday is coming. <laughs> oh, God, we, we know it's Friday, but we know Sunday is coming. And so I pray, God, for the resurrection of Jesus to be in all of our lives. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God said, amen. Amen. Pastor, we just had church. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. God bless you, sir. Happy Resurrection Weekend to you all. Happy yes, Friday. Have church no matter where you are. Pastor, thank you so much. For more about Pastor Moore, visit him at carolinachurch.org. Right. And you're going to have church this Sunday, right? They can go there also and join you among the, those thousands. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Be honored to have you at carolinachurch.org. They go right there and um, can tap right into what we're doing. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>